I'm Lisa Snyderman, and this is Conversations on Creating to Heal. Today, I'm really happy to be speaking with Sylvia Brollier in El Sobranti, California, an artist, dancer, musician, and writer. And her story is being shaped by extreme challenges, finding the blessings, and inspiring others with her art and music. So welcome, Sylvia. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, thanks for being here today. So I talked a little bit and said that you wear a lot of different artistic hats, dancer and writer and musician and, and so many different things. Can you talk a little bit about who you are and if you might have a mission or purpose for some of the things you're doing? Yes, thank you. Yeah, I, as a basis, believe that connecting to the creative force connects one to your life force. I'm very interested in the planet surviving, so that's really the ultimate uh, opportunity for life force, because uh, without this planet, of course, we don't have life. So uh, I want to dedicate my all my life to healing and to planetary transformation any way that I can. Wow, that's such a beautiful and a very large mission. So maybe to bring that back down to earth, which is kind of funny, uh, not to be, yeah, not to be punny. Talk a little bit about your story. So obviously we all go through life events and difficult challenges in our lives. And some of those events are more transformative than others. So for you, what were the events and how have they most significantly transformed you? Well, I've had, I've had a life of immense challenges and immense gifts. Uh, my father found me dead in the crib at 10 weeks. And wow. he revived me, and I got mostly better. <laughs> but You're then, here? That's a, that is absolutely amazing. Yes, yeah. well, I, you know, of course, I don't remember it consciously, but it had a profound effect on me. And uh, by the time I was 17, 18, I developed a neurological disorder that acts like a seizure disorder. So I would have these mysterious seizures that nobody could name what it is. Finally, it got diagnosed just, just even here. I'm in my 50s and they finally said, oh, there's a skip in your software. So I've had periods where I've been in a power wheelchair. I go back and forth between being an acrobat and a total cripple. Wow. So it's been my experience that when I can move, when I can use these hands, these arms, I can dance, I do, I take life fully, you know? And so it's an inspiration to like every, ma every moment counts. You yeah. know, at this point, I've died twice and been struck by lightning once. <laughs> I'm hoping that's enough. <laughs> So the goal is like, how do you keep this up attitude in the face of so much hardship? That is such a great a lot question. Of people watching yeah. and listening probably have some inquiry about. You know, yeah, so, so for you, what was it that, how did you, you know, did you so turn one, to your one, I want to talk about two, two different times. One time when I was totally, became totally crippled, but I would still, go in my wheelchair, get driven into town, go up the elevator, go to the dance, slide out of my wheelchair and roll around on the ground. I couldn't get up, but I still went anyway yeah. because it gave me life force. Don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. What gives you juice? You have to do it. Because when you really do what gives you energy, then of course you're going to have energy. And when I'm dancing, part of my disability drops away because I come into my light. I come into my higher place. And I think that art does that for a lot of people, sometimes by as a way of disgorging our, our negativity and sometimes as a way as juicing our positivity or our empowerment. God, that's beautiful. I just, I love that. And I so resonate. I always think of it as when I'm in my flow or my place of pure bliss or joy, it's yeah. not that the illness totally disappears, but I'm so in that moment that that kind of, you know, falls away and it's yes, it all like about the joy and the bliss. So, oh gosh, that's such a beautiful way to describe yeah. what yeah, you're going through. It's like, I'm surfing a really good wave. Ah! Especially when you're at a really, 
you're playing, like I'm, I'm a musician, so playing an amazing run or dancing and you're really amazing or you do a painting, this is one of my paintings, um, and, and something amazing happens. So not too long ago, I had an amazing concussion from dancing. I got uh, uh, accidentally tossed in the air and fell in the air to my forehead. Uh -huh. I had quite a bad concussion and my career of 30 years of doing teaching healing work and hypnotherapy and uh, personal growth and stuff. I couldn't do the marketing anymore. I, I said, okay, I guess it's time to just do my art. Yeah. And then I had this amazing thing happen. I got hired to do painting for this gallery exhibit called, uh, that was uh, the encyclical gallery, which was about Pope, um, Pope Francis' 2015 address about climate change which is a pretty genius, like I agree with everything except for the line about abortion, but the rest of it was like, yes, this is what we need to do. And so I did a, my own exhibit called The Nature Within. And it was um, a multimedia exhibit about, you know, we, we say like, I wanna get out in nature, I love nature, but it's almost like a voyeuristic relationship. We see ourselves as outside of it, we have to go to it. But you know what? We are nature. So I wanted yeah. to somehow express that. So I found poets who would do a two minute long spoken poem. Yeah. And um, talking about their relationship, how nature lives in them. And then I took a picture of my, of this person. And then I, I painted their, them inside of their poem. And then Ooh. I used the music to go behind the, the poetry. And so it's the painting, the poetry, and the music. What and a lovely intersection of all. And, and so what was the impact from that? And how was that it experience? Was, it was so well was, received. It was, yeah. I did three pieces. Uh, one, uh, one was my friend Bob, and one with Great Tricks, and, my, and one was of myself, and one was my friend uh, Kimba Thurich. And uh, it was so well received, I won a grand prize, woo! <laughs> Congratulations, but I know it's not the award for you. I know that no, just was, that expression. It was on the head after yeah. so much good work. You yeah. know, yeah. like to say, yes, you matter. What you Absolutely. do matter. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's how I got it. But that's what I want to say to every artist here. What you do matters. You are being the creator, the creatrix, expressing and creating a new creation through you. You're bringing in new culture. That's what artists do. Gosh, that's lovely. Yeah, what your energy is not only um, contagious, but it's also very inspiring. And I imagine that when you share your art, it has a healing and inspiring impact on others. So talk a little bit about you know, when you share a painting or when you're sharing, you're a speaker as well, right? When you yeah. speak, when you write, what kind, what kind of experience do you feel as, you know, the creator? And also, what has the impact been on the people that you're sharing it with? Wow, that's a really good <laughs> question. Whew, it's so complex. Um, for me, it's a lot about sharing my joy. Because it's not like, oh, I made this. It's like, look at this thing that exists now. <laughs> That's how I usually feel about it. Yeah. The most excitement a lot of times is, is the excitement that, uh, that of creation. Like, uh, what my paintings often are sort of um, a little bit brighter than nature really is, or a little more vibrant, because that's kind of how I see reality. It's just, this this uh, sense of wonder. Yes. Yeah, you know, I definitely I resonate. Wonder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, that's actually what my poem is about that I do my piece to that I'm going to share today. Looking at your painting behind you, you're, it's extraordinary. Just your eye for detail and capturing the essence. Uh, you're, you're, you're talented, but you also get into some of the essence of the painting. And I just wanted to say that, you know, that's coming oh, through. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I, I, I started out as a botanical illustrator. I studied in college. And um, 
And then I went on to doing other art in the background while I did my healing work. And I was always very structured. I was always trying, I called it the art of seeing. Like, I just want to really see it so I portray it properly. But now my goal is different. Now I do a prayer and I let the paint tell me what the painting is. Wow. And it's much more of an intuitive process, more like, uh, you know, doing a, a reading or a workshop. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, it's really freed me up. And uh, I, I love it. I just love the process. I'd love to have you share more of a meaningful piece to you and then talk about why you're sharing it. Today I'm going to share my piece, Wonder, which is a combination of a painting, a poem, and a piece of music that I wrote and performed. So this is my experience of the nature within and how it awakens wonder within me. Ensouled in this earthly temple made of flesh, I greet this day with wonder. Oh, what a fabulous miracle to be born, to live and to die on this astounding garden planet so teeming with life and beauty. I am nature. Every breath, every beat of my heart, a gift to be treasured. Every day counted, value, immeasurable. And was it inspired by you? This is your self-portrait, you said, right? Yes, it is. So what was it? How, how did you get the inspiration? Do you use visuals or is this completely, you know, collective, conscious? Like, how, what's the inspiration for you for this? Well, this one actually came from uh, Pope Francis's encyclical, which uh, we were to take a passage from it. And there's a particular passage that talked about how nature lives inside of us. And so I meditated on that. Yeah. And that's what arose for me. A lot of times my paintings arise from a quiet place. So I go within quietly and see what appears in my mind's eye or. Yeah. And how long did this process take? This painting, probably uh, uh, the painting, the music, and the poem probably took me 120 hours. Wow, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. I, before we go, I just want to ask you, and I'm sure you probably have a lot to say about this, but do you have some life lessons or things, maybe even self-affirmation, that help you and, and that might help somebody else going through something similar? Mm -hmm. I think. The, the central thing that I want to say is, is that you have value. No matter what anybody else says, anybody in the past has said, anybody in the future has had, you know what your value is because you know what your passion is. And if you're following your passion, your true, what really makes you, your heart, your spirit open, something will happen somewhere for someone. And yeah. And it's not for us to weigh, but it's for us to live. I love that. And so you have value, follow your passion, follow your bliss. And it sounds like it's kind of, it's your path. It's your purpose. And when you're yeah, on that, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're, you're in a place where, you know, everything should align. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, it's not actually always easy to follow your path. You know, a lot of times... A lot of times people that like the, the, like the new age thought is like, Oh, if you follow your bliss, everything works. No, sometimes it's awful, but there's still that moment of joy when the creation is good. <laughs> so thank you so much for your light and your brightness and your attitude and your energy and for coming on to conversations on creating to heal. Oh, thank you so much, Lisa, for your uh, creating the space for this, for people to come forward. Cause this is really important what you're doing. So Thank you.